Today I'll be testing out this Beat Paint Metallic set and I'm going to do this on 5 Stormcast Eternals from Age of Sigmar. The kit comes with 10 colors but I'm going to be testing 7 of them. Golden Armor, Glittering Loot, Hoplite Gold, Aztec Gold, Polished Silver, Broadsword Silver, and Enchanted Steel. This is the paint review but I also thought might as well make it a tutorial as well. I'm going to be painting up the Hammers of Sigmar, the Hallowed Knights, the Celestial Vindicators, the Anvils of the Heldenhammer, and the Knights Excelsior. Regardless of the paint scheme, I'm going to be first starting out with a black prime. Now I want to do this either with an airbrush with an airbrush primer, or you can also use a black aerosol primer out of a spray can. After that, I'm going to apply a white zenithal highlight and I'm doing this with an airbrush with an airbrush white primer and you want to apply it at a 45 degree angle all the way around. Again, you can always use an aerosol can for this, but airbrushes allow a little bit more control. The first paint scheme is going to be for the Hammers of Sigmar, the most renowned of all the storm hosts. This is mainly a golden armor with some blue. For this, I'm going to try Golden Armor, which is one of the new metallic speed paints from Army Painter. And I apply it with a broad brush all over the armor sections, which is almost the entire model. This color also belongs on the crest on the shield. The upper portions of the spears as well as the pummels get this gold color as well. Next I use broadsword silver and this goes on the spearhead. Next I apply Highlord Blue and this is a regular speed paint, not a metallic speed paint. And this is one of the primary colors of the Hammers of Sigmar. I apply Highlord Blue onto the pauldrons being very careful not to apply it onto the crest or onto the thunderbolt symbol on the left pauldron, you'll want to leave these white. For the Hammers of Sigmar, the middle of their shields are also blue. Speed paint is really watery and low viscosity, so they're able to get into the recesses very easily with not much effort. The tops of the pauldrons and the crest on the right pauldron are also gold. I actually forgot to apply this earlier, so I'm doing it right now. Next, I apply Grim Black, which is a normal speed paint, not metallic. And this goes on the handle of the spears. You can also paint the back sides of the shields with Grim Black as well. I also paint the sheets and the handles of their swords black. Next, I'll paint up only the faithful, the Hallowed Knights. They are mainly silver with some blue and gold trim. To test out the rest of the colors in the box, I'm going to use a different silver this time. I'm going to use polished silver. Using a broad brush again, I applied this silver all over the armor plates of this model. This color really came out very shiny and bright. It is something that you expect when you paint silver, and it also had just enough tint that it would get into the recesses. Trying a different gold this time, I used Glittering Loot. And this was actually a brighter color compared to the Golden Armor color that I used earlier. It was actually a very nice gold and again, something that you would associate with the color gold. I applied this color to basically the same areas that I did on the Hammers of Sigmar model. The periphery of the shield, the top of the pauldrons, and the spears. The crest of the shield though is different. For the Hallowed Knights, you want to apply silver in this area instead of gold. Similar to the Hammers of Sigma, I apply Highlord Blue onto the pauldron areas as well as the center of the shield. Grim Black non-metallic speed paint goes on the handles of the spears as well as the sheets and the handles of the sword. Next come the Celestial Vindicators. Now these guys have a very distinctive green armor. There is no green metallic paint that comes in the set, but there is something close called Aztec Gold. What you want to do is mix some Absolution Green, which is a regular speed paint, one part Aztec Gold with two parts Absolution Green. 
and you'll want to make sure you mix these colors up real good and if you do you're going to get a very greenish tint of metallic. For the Celestial Vindicator, I'm using a different gold just to try it out. I'm using Hoplite Gold, and this color ended up looking really bright. This is a much brighter tint of gold compared to the other two that I used. It was almost like a metallic yellow rather than a gold. Trying a new steel color, I use Enchanted Steel. This color had a very nice cool look to it because of the blue tint that's in it. Same as the previous two models, the handle of the spear, the back of the shield, and also the sheath of the sword and the handle of the sword, I paint those with grim black non-metallic speed paint. And I use holy white for the white areas of the Celestial Vindicator's armor, which are mainly the pauldrons and also the center of the shield. Next, we move on to the anvils of the Helden Hammer with their distinctive black armor. There is no black metallic speed paint, so just like the Celestial Vindicators, we'll come up with one. For this, I'm going to be using polished silver and mix it with some grim black. Just like before, I use one part polished silver with two parts grim black and then go ahead and mix it up. When you apply it onto the model, it's going to look like metallic black. It's not going to be completely black, it's going to look a little bit more like a very dark gray but it'll have that metallic tint in it, which is a nice effect. Besides that, I'm going to be using the same colors as I'd used before. I'm going to use Glittering Loot for all the gold areas. It is a nice bright gold and it contrasts well against the black armor. And polished silver for the spearhead because it's a bright silver. The anvils of the Hilden Hammer feature black as their main accent color, and I'm going to be putting grim black onto the pauldrons as well as the center of the shields. And as usual, Grim Black goes on the handles of the spears as well as the swords. Last come the Knights Excelsior. They have white armor, which is the inverse of the anvils of the Hilden Hammer. And as you can guess, there aren't any metallic white paint. So again, we're going to be mixing them. We're going to be combining polished silver with holy white. And like before, it's one part silver, two parts white. After mixing the colors up, you'll apply them onto the armor panels with a broad brush. It will look like a very bright metallic at first, but once it dries, the white actually creates a slightly matte finish and it will look more like white armor. And to offset this slightly brighter white armor, I'm going to apply golden armor, which is the darkest of all the golds. And I'll apply it on the main goal areas like the trim around the shields, on the pauldrons, on the crest, and so on. And it creates a nice darker contrast to this much brighter looking model. Like the Hammers of Sigma and the Hallowed Knights, you'll be using Hylor Blue on all the blue areas, which are the pauldrons and the center of the shields. Grim Black Speed Paint goes on the handles of the spears, on the swords, and also on the insides of the shields, similar to the previous models. The spearhead can be any color. I use Broad Sword Silver for this area. Regardless of the color scheme, there are going to be a few leather straps on all the models. And for this, you'll want to use Leather Brown, a standard acrylic paint, and just use it with a pointed tip brush to apply around the belts, as well as the straps that go down to the swords. Most standard acrylic paints will require some washes to give it depth, so use strong tone on all the leather brown parts that you applied earlier. These Vindictor models that I'm using have some little terrain bits like skulls and rocks. What you'll do is just grab a gray speed paint, doesn't really matter which one, and just apply some on these parts. For basing, I like to keep it simple. I use just some flocking material and some Elmer's glue, apply it with an old brush onto the top of the base. And then after that, just dunk the entire base into the tub of flocking material and the flocking should stick to it. Let's compare the three golds, the first one being golden armor, and then glittering loot, and finally hoplite gold. As you can see, the golden armor tends to be a little bit darker, 
while the glittering loot is definitely the brightest of the golds that I tried. Hoplite has a little bit more of a yellow tinge to it and it's not as rich as glittering loot from the left golden armor in the middle glittering loot and on the right hoplite gold. Now comparing the silvers I use broadsword silver, polished silver, and enchanted steel. The first one is broadsword silver and it's a very dark color. This is something that you would use in a more grim dark sort of setting. So this Hammers of Sigmar model overall has a darker look because I use golden armor which is dark and then I also use broadsword silver which is also dark. Comparison with polished silver which is much brighter. This is what you would associate with a pretty normal silver. So this Hallowed Knights model is very typical of what most people would paint. This one over here is enchanted steel. There's a little bit of a blue tint in it. If you compare it against the regular, what I would call regular silver, you can see that it glints a little bit more, has a slightly magical tone to it. And I kind of like it. It's, it's pretty nice if you want to give your silver something a little bit special. The one on the left is broadsword silver. The one in the middle is polished silver. And the one on the right is enchanted steel. Some thoughts on Aztec gold, which I use as part of the Celestial Vindicators armor. When combined with the Absolution green, it actually gives a much darker tint of green. And the Aztec gold is nice because it's got a lot of green pigmentation in it. So it's a very nice greenish gold. For a certain application, it works really well. Now, polished silver was probably my favorite silver because it's very versatile. You can use it as silver silver, which is what I have here on this Hallowed Knights model. This model for the anvils of the Heldenhammer, I combined it one parts polished silver with two parts grim black, and it creates a very nice darkish, almost black armor. And I really like this effect. So the polished silver will give some pop and metallic look to buy if you combine it with regular speed paints this turned out really well and then also with two drops of holy white i was able to get a silverish white armor on these guys which are the night six celsius here are some 360 degree views of all five models just to give you a look at the different colors on the 3d surface all the colors in the kit seem to have its own uses. The two most versatile ones that I found were polished silver and glittering loot. Those were a very nice silver and a very nice gold respectively. These metallics are really fast to use and I definitely recommend them on any heavily armored model. I hope this video helps you select the metallic speed paints that you need and also help you paint up your army of Stormcast Eternals. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.